Hey friends, I've been getting some great questions lately about what's involved with the maintenance of a hurdy-gurdy. So that's what we're going to cover today on Hurdy-Gurdy World. There's two main items of maintenance you're going to do pretty regularly on a hurdy-gurdy. That's cotton on the strings and rosin on the wheel. We're going to talk a little bit about each, although the main focus of today is really about cotton on the strings. The two main tools you'll need for this are your rosin and your cotton. Long fibered cotton works better than short fibered. Uh, if you're not sure which is which, just peel it apart. If it has long strands, that's long fiber cotton. Usually the stuff you get out of aspirin bottles has very short fibers, meaning you pull it apart and it breaks right apart like there's not the long strands. That doesn't wrap very well around the wheels. Let's get started. When I talk about the cotton on a hurdy-gurdy, I'm referring specifically to where the strings cross over the wheel, they're wrapped with little bits of cotton. Why do we have cotton on there? Well, it serves two purposes. First, it mellows the sound, makes it just that much sweeter. And second, it also protects the string from friction of the wheel wearing it away over time. So you get a lot more string life out of your strings. I'll slid the cotton off to the side, as you can see, and I'll give you a quick sample of how this string sounds without cotton. You can hear how it's a little bit harsh sounding. Now I'll slide the cotton back in place and give it another play and you'll hear a difference. I'm just hitting some random notes so it's not going to sound very musical right now. So having said why we have the cotton in the first place, why do we ever need to change it? Well, the hurdy-gurdy wheel is pretty much like your violin bow. Just like a violin bow, we periodically apply rosin to the wheel just to make sure it, it's got enough tack to make the strings vibrate. You can see I'm applying a little rosin here. One thing about the rosin, over time, the cotton is going to drink that rosin off the wheel. So when cotton is fresh and supple, it sounds very sweet. But the more you play over time, like a couple of days or maybe a week or two, it's going to gradually start to harden up and kind of fossilize in place around the string because it's soaking up that rosin from the wheel. So now the cotton is getting harder and harder and harder over time. When that happens, it starts to sound harsh and screechy. Uh, I've got dead cotton on this string, so I'm going to demo it for you so you know how it sounds like. You can also feel the cotton if it's just like really hard and fossilized. That's, that's a sign that it's pretty dead too. Uh, usually if you're getting weird sounds from your hurdy-gurdy, the first thing you'll do is change your cotton. And usually that'll, that'll get you there. How to, what does it sound like when the cotton's dead? I've got just this one string turned on. The cotton's pretty dead, so I'll give you a sample. You hear how it's a little screechier sounding, not so sweet? So we're going to change the cotton, and I'm going to show you how to do that. First thing, lift the string off the wheel. I'll just take both my melody strings off the wheel. Second, peel the cotton away that you're going to change. Now, if the cotton is really dead and really hard, this might take a minute. Like, this cotton here is just crazy like cement on the string, so I'm really having to work for it. Well, that could have been worse. Uh, your mileage may vary. You may have to work a little bit harder to get your cotton out if, if you're getting weird sounds. Before we apply new cotton on there, I like to put rosin directly on the string. Why do I do this? The rosin kind of acts like glue and helps the cotton wrap around it just a little better. I just lightly rub the string. You don't have to go too crazy. I'm going to peel off a little wisp of cotton from my supply here. Now I'm going to lower the string onto the wheel. Wrapping the string. The gut strings are pretty easy. They almost wrap themselves. I'll give you a little demo. That's it. Now, did I do it right? How do I tell? Well, you see I've got kind of a big clumpy mess there. 
a thin tube of cotton will usually sound best. If you have too much cotton, you get kind of a tea kettle sound. Hear how it's warbling and vibrating kind of weird, like it's not giving me a pure clean note. Yeah, that little fluttery sound, that's a sign there's too much cotton. So I'm just gonna peel some off. And there we go, nice clean note. As you noticed, it went quite easily with mine. Now, if you're following at home, if you have a hurdy-gurdy and you're trying to wrap it, you're probably scratching your head. It's never gone on that easy for me. I mean, give me a worst case scenario, something I really have to work for. And I'll explain now how to deal with that. As I mentioned, the gut strings wrap by themselves. Usually the problems come in with wound strings. On the hurdy-gurdies I make, we use actual cello strings for our low drones, which are wrapped strings. That means they have a core, which is a string, and then a metal wrap around them. So first I'll peel off the old cotton. As before, I will rosin the string here. Very gently, doesn't take too much. I know it was quite loud there. You hear a little scratching, but really I wasn't pressing very hard on the string. Peel off some cotton, apply it to the string. Let me make sure all my other strings are turned off so I don't get sound. Well, gee, that went on pretty easy too. But let's say it didn't. Let's say it's really not grabbing very well. What you can do is kind of wrap the string by force around the wheel. You see the wheel this way when I'm cranking goes that direction. So I'm going to peel it the opposite direction. That's going to help the string wind. Now you see I've got a little extra here. Normally I'll peel that off. But for now, I'm going to leave it on. I'm going to show you something that can go wrong and cause you some headaches. Let's say you just freshly changed the cotton and now you're getting some weird sounds. There we go. I've induced a situation which is pretty common for a lot of new people with cotton. I just changed my drone, but I'm not getting a great sound. And the reason why, something to watch out for, you see I've got a little strand of cotton reaching down from one string to the other. That's what's causing the problem. If I separate them, they'll go back to making nice sounds. There we go. Looks like I need to rewrap this drone too, so I'll go ahead and do that because that's causing some weird sounds with all that extra cotton floating around. So there. that's basically the art of changing cotton on hurdy-gurdy strings. Before we walk away from this topic, I'll give you a couple of things to watch out for. We talked about the strand that reaches down. Where the string co crosses the wheel, uh, make sure it covers as much as possible so it's touching as much of the wheel as possible. For instance, sometimes your cotton will go off to the side like that and you'll get kind of unwanted sounds. It'll start to sound a little scratchier, a little harsh. So if you're getting that, just make sure your cotton is well positioned. If you remember my demo earlier of playing the string without cotton altogether, it sounds just a little scratchier. That's basically what you get. So again, make sure your cotton covers the wheel entirely. There is one exception to the rule about cotton going all the way across the surface of the wheel. If you are in the DG tuning and have the high octave version where one of your melody strings is tuned to D5, an octave above middle D, because that's a such thinner string and also made of a very special composite synthetic material. In this one instance, to get the best sound, you're going to just cotton part of the string there where it only touches like a third of the wheel rim. 
Again, you have to noodle with it just a little bit. If you get too much cotton, it'll make that warbly sound. So pretty easy to do, just that one string. Keep an eye on how you cotton it. Less is more for that one string. The last thing I'll mention on this topic, in the age of liquid rosin, I am aware there are some videos out there which recommend applying rosin directly to the cotton. If you're dealing with liquid rosin, you'd take your eyedropper and just, I'm not going to, you would douse it directly on the cotton. <clears throat> I don't recommend that. I recommend you avoid that at all costs. Usually people recommend doing that so you can crank the wheel both ways and the cotton won't unwind. Surely you noticed when I was wrapping the cotton, I tried to orient it and wrap it the direction the wheel is turning. So if you crank forwards and backwards a whole bunch, you can kind of start to unwrap your cotton. A little bit should be okay. But a lot of people I'm seeing on the internet are using liquid rosin to apply directly to the cotton to go ahead and lock it down so they can crank both ways. I recommend against that because the thing that kills cotton in the first place is it's drinking rosin off the wheel and gradually getting harder and harder. Soft, supple cotton will sound best. If you apply rosin directly to the cotton, you're going to kill it right away. She's back in singing shape. Hopefully this was helpful and gave you a little insight into some of the maintenance of a hurdy-gurdy. Once you get the hang of it, it's really no big deal. It takes way less time than this video took. So a little uh, insight into the process there. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.